Hello, and welcome to Eye on AI, our weekly look at all the things that are moving and shaking the world of AI from our perspective. I'm Matt Wicks, co-CEO of the Virtual Forge. We're recording this today from our beautiful offices here in Lisbon, beautiful semi-sunny Lisbon. So first up, and pretty appropriately for an eye on AI, is an eye scanner. So this is from World, uh, and this is a rebrand of the company which was previously called WorldCoin, uh, and it was co-founded by Sam Altman, he of OpenAI fame. So this is a clever little device, it's a hardware device that scans your iris and then gets all of your biometric data. And the idea behind this is that in an age of AI and AI fakery, what it's trying to do is identify and prove that you're a human. So it does a biometric scan of your iris, it then sends the information to an app and you are identified as human, if indeed you are a human, uh, and you are identified as a human to the world network, which is the network which is behind world as well. So this is this was previously announced in 2019, should be available in 2025. Number two this week, Runway have released a fun new tool, which is called Act One. And what this allows you to do is to puppet images with your face. So you're able to have an avatar and you're able to control its faces and its expressions by using your own face. Uh, so this is great because it's a, it's a step towards being able to fully control actors, virtual actors within an AI generated environment, which is one of the big challenges. If, if AI, AI wants to become really big and be able to be used by creators, in a truly controlled fashion. This is one of the important steps that had to be overcome in order to do that. At the moment, you can only do 30 seconds worth of content, but it's pretty impressive um, in both animated and photorealistic avatars. Number three, OpenAI have launched ChatGPT Search. So this is currently live on the Teams and the professional mode. This service uses Microsoft Bing capabilities under the, under the hood, and it can be turned on automatically or manually, depending on what you're searching for. So the results so far seem very exciting. Clearly, this is a huge challenge to Google's domination in the in the search market and expect a powerful response from them, which has already kind of come through Gemini. But it'll be interesting to see what the next steps are in this ever escalating AI search war. On the subject of AI search, for those of you who haven't seen it yet, let me direct you towards my content scout our partner company, which has an amazing product, which is all around AI search within your own environment. Number four, obviously all companies, whether they're large enterprises or SMEs are trying to integrate AI into their workflow and find a way that works for them, which goes beyond just somebody using ChatGPT uh, to, to answer a few questions or generate a report um, and to put some controls and barriers around that as well. So a large part of this and the discussion in the last few months has become much more focused on agents and the the commonality of agents to, to apps really on, on mobile phones. So just like you always used to say, hey, I've got an app that does this, you now are able to say, let's build an agent or I've got an agent that does this. So I, I can offload this task and chain those agents together to create exciting possibilities. Um, and AWS have just launched an extremely good one and a half hour course, which is an introduction to this using their, their software or their, their services, obviously. Um, so this is called um, Serverless Agentic Workflows with Amazon Bedrock. And it is, a, a like I said, it's an hour and a half course. It's, it's done by Mike Chambers, who's well known and well respected within the industry and uh, is super interesting and covers the initial steps of creating agents using AWS Bedrock other providers are available. And finally, for this week, number five, uh, Microsoft recently released OmniParser. So this is a new model which is designed to understand and interpret screenshots of UIs. So for example, and turn those into structured data. So, so you may have a situation in which you are trying to get it to understand which buttons you press in order to be able to perform a particular action. So instead of having to write complex code for that, it, it now has the ability to understand that to transfer that into structured data, which can then be used by agents further down the chain to perform specific tasks. I think what's interesting about this is not only its immediate functionality, but the nature of AI is changing how we see data and communication. So previously, you would always have different ways of understanding data in terms of video images, uh, spreadsheets, 
UIs, and the human brain is able to interpret those and turn them into something. AI is now getting to the point where the commonality of that information discourse is also available to it to be able to make decisions and drive uh, agents from that. So this is another step towards that. And I think it's, it's pretty exciting stuff. And that's it for this week. So have a great week, everybody, and catch up with us next week as we continue to keep an eye on AI. <laughs>